G'day YouTube. Welcome to part two of my Iridium satellite decoding tutorial series. Apologies for the delay in getting part two released. I contracted a very nasty illness and was basically down and out for the entire two weeks since I uploaded the first part. Sorry about that. I'm feeling a lot better now, but I do have a lingering cough, but I'm sufficiently dosed up on meds, but don't be surprised if I mute the microphone in a coughing fit. Let's get into it, shall we? Oh, and in case you guys didn't know, I collaborated with Aaron from the SEMA Executor YouTube channel in one of his videos. It was a heap of fun, so go and check that out. I'm going to have Aaron on my channel at some stage, so keep your eyes peeled for that in the near future. So recapping what we did in part one, we configured the software tools we needed and set up our radio receiving hardware. And finally, we captured some real Iridium data to a file in our home directory. If we turn our attention to the file browser now, this is the output.bits file that we will be working with for this tutorial. In its current form, this file is useless to us as it requires some parsing before we can extract usable data from it. The Python script titled Iridium Parser, which is included in the Iridium Toolkit software suite, is what we will utilize to pass our output.bits file. <coughs> now the passing process does take a considerable amount of time, but this is dependent on the file size of your capture file to aid us in speeding up the passing process, I'm going to show you how to install PyPy3 in um, Dragon OS Focal X. PyPy3 runs faster than the standard Python 3 implementation. Um, you're going to need a internet connection for this portion of the tutorial. So if you haven't done so already, I'm going to open a terminal window and run the following command. Don't forget that I put all the comments that I run in the description or the pinned comment down below. So I'll just run that command. And it should install PyPy3 without issue in the R35 ISO of Dragon OS Focal X. It's taking a bit of time. I don't have my stream recording beer today because I don't think it's wise to mix alcohol and cough medication. So I'm just on the waters today, guys. Okay. So that seems to have finished installing now so the next command i'll run and it's the final command is oh the final command to install pi pi 3 anyway is something called crc mod which is a python module which um pi pi 3 is dependent on so i'll just copy and paste the following command and hit enter on that <clears throat> and that should have installed without a hitch if either of those commands failed for whatever reason, don't worry, it's not essential. And I'll show you how to run each of the Iridium decoding commands without PyPy3. So it's not it's not a big deal. It just helps you pass the file a bit faster, that's it. So with that small tangent aside, let's delve into how exactly we can pass the output.bits file inside of our home directory. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the passing command into our terminal window. Just hold on for one second, guys. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, coughing fit again. Okay. If you didn't manage to install PyPy3, you can simply pass your output.bits file by typing Python 3 instead of PyPy3. So I'll just hit enter on that. 
And immediately we should see a file titled output.past. And that's been created inside of our home directory and it's file size is growing as we can see here. This is a good sign. So this Iridium data was captured on that Sunday that I recorded the part one video. I captured from about 1 p.m. till about 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So it was about four hours or something like that. Historically, Sundays are very quiet on the satellites, here in Australia at least. So f three or four hours should have netted me about 320 megabytes, roughly. Should only take a minute to pass that much. So after the Iridium parser, Python script has done its thing. Um, you'll see the command finish running in the terminal and the file size will stop growing. So we'll just wait for that process to complete. <clears throat> Should be about 265 megabytes, I think. There we go. So obviously this is less than the size of the output.bits file. Um, that's completely normal. I guess you could make the assumption that the parser is like trashing and throwing out unusable and junk data. I get that's just my guess. I'm not really sure of the underlying processes involved. I should though, because you should always know how a software tool works before you start playing around with it. So now that we have our past Iridium data in our home directory now, we can instruct Iridium Toolkit to begin extracting useful data from it. So what I'm going to do first is show you guys the public Iridium data, which is perfectly legal to decode. And then we'll start delving slightly into gray area territory towards the middle. And then towards the end of the video, if we've got enough time, that's where I'll demonstrate the legally dubious stuff like voice calls and SMS decoding. But I'm going to use recordings of my own Iridium data traffic. Since I guess that most people clicked on this video for the voice and SMS decoding anyway, I'll put the timestamp here or over here somewhere. Um, but I urge you to stick around because it's always better to edu educate yourself and learn how a particular software tool works before advancing to the holy grail stuff. Since there is a lot of public data that can be extracted, I'll need to fly through these pretty quickly. So the first thing we will do <coughs> to ensure that we have a good Iridium capture file is by running the following command to show us a plot of all the different types of Iridium frames that we've captured. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste the following command. And then I'll hit enter on that. Might take a little bit to run, depending on the size of your capture file. So this window here, I'll refer to as the plot. <coughs> on the Y axis, we have the frequency that the frame was captured on. And on the X axis, we have the passage of time as the recording was being taken. So over here is about one o'clock in the afternoon. Over here is about five o'clock in the afternoon. You'll always see the lines on the plot sloping down. This is due to Doppler shift because the satellite vehicles are moving very quickly relative um, to your stationary antenna. You should be expecting your own plot to look somewhat similar to this. If you have a very small amount of different colored dots on your plot or none at all, you might have to troubleshoot your antenna placement or radio receiving equipment. And you can click on these different types of data types to um, yeah, select which one you want to display and which ones you don't want to display. So that's pretty cool. So I'll just close that now. So this is a good way to troubleshoot your setup. So if you've got nothing showing here, you've done something wrong. So I always urge people to check your stats plot just to make sure that you've actually got usable data. So the next thing that we will look at now is visualizing the path of the satellites 
flew over the Earth as we received their signal. So, and we can also map the positions of where the data was downlinked to a device on Earth's surface. They call that a heat map. So I'll go ahead and run the following few commands. So we need to CD into the Iridium Toolkit folder and then to output the satellite tracks. A KML file which can be opened in Google Earth. We'd run that command and then to export a KML file for the heat map, we run this command. And you can see in our home directory, two KML files have been created. So first I'll open up the tracks. So yeah, you need Google Earth installed for this, but if you don't have Google Earth, I believe you can just upload it into the web Google Earth. I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, we can rotate Earth's globe. And we can see we can see the path that each Iridium satellite vehicle flew by each path each Iridium vehicle took as it passed over my antenna. And it looks like we have a few or a couple of out of control satellites flying all over the place crashing back to Earth. I'm not sure what that's about, but we'll move on anyway. So I'll just open the heat map KML file now. And we can see the downlink positions of, so th all these dots, black dots and different colored dots here, uh, the downlink positions an Iridium satellite vehicle transmitted data to. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You can see I'm basically covering the entire continent of Australia and most of Indonesia and Malaysia, which is pretty cool. So I'll just close Google Earth now. Um, the next thing I'll show you how to do is extract ACAR messages. If you don't know what ACARS is, it's essentially a two-way communication link between ground stations and aircraft for exchanging short text messages. So you can decode those messages using the following command. So I'll clear the terminal. We need to CD back to our home directory. And then I'll copy and paste the next command. Sometimes there is text um, written by a human being in amongst these messages, well, system messages, to which I don't quite understand. But the aircraft call signs are listed in this column here in the middle. I'll blow that out for privacy reasons. So what I'll do now is show you guys how to extract plain text IP traffic from your past Iridium capture file. This data is mostly unreadable garbage, but if you sift through it, there is a little bit of human readable stuff in there to look at. Some examples of this traffic could be things like FTP login banners, domain names, IP addresses, stuff of that nature. I highly against trying to transcribe the following command as it's a bit of a mouthful, so I'll just copy and paste it. Um, or you guys can copy and paste it from the video description or pinned comment below. So I'll just run the following command. Because this IP traffic isn't meant for mine and your eyes, I'll blur that out video. I'll blur, oh, sorry, I'll blur that out in the video until I can find a portion of the data which is just junk and doesn't have anything really comprehensible in there. Yeah, okay, I'll unblow the video now. So this is typically what you can expect to see most of the time, but there is readable stuff in there. <clears throat> okay, moving on, the next thing I'll show you guys is short burst data um, decoding. So we're kind of getting into gray area territory now. Short burst data is not fully under 
understood at this stage, but I can ambiguously tell you that satellite messaging devices such as Garmin InReach and Zolios may or may not use this service for communication. I don't know. You guys can figure that out on your own. So I'll copy and paste the following command. Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice here. We'll keep trudging along. Hopefully I don't lose it until we finish recording the video. So I'll run the following command here. For the most part, this data... <clears throat> sorry, for the most part, this data is a, mostly a bunch of hexadecimal values. But if you look hard enough, you might discover some human readable plain text. I'll just scroll upwards until I can find somewhere. Um, so I can find somewhere without private data, and I think we can. I think I'll unblur the video here. <clears throat> so this is typically what you can expect to see when working with short burst iridium data. Okay, the last thing I'll show you before we guys. Ah, uh, sorry. The last thing I'll show you guys before we move on to the really juicy stuff is pager messages. Now, this one is a bit of a mixed bag. The amount of pager traffic on Iridium has essentially become non-existent since the launch of Starlink, at least in Australia, from what I've noticed. And if there is still pager traffic in your area, it's probably almost always encrypted. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste the following command. Hit enter on that and we can see nothing happen which is very typical these days and pager messages are hardly used anywhere near australia at the current time thanks to starlink i'm guessing anyway <clears throat> okay but if you did have pager messages captured it'll probably look something like this um, the reason you're seeing all these like randomized characters is because the data is encrypted. There is no way to decrypt these messages with Iridium Toolkit, to my knowledge. Okay. We've now reached the portion of the video that most people have been waiting for, finally. Um, that is voice and SMS decoding. So first, we will take a look at Iridium voice decoding and how exactly we can achieve that. So I'll just do some cleaning up in my home directory here. So setting the scene, I've got my... Oh, hang on. Sorry about that. Okay. So in my home directory, we've got the output.pass file that I captured the day that I recorded part one. It's in my home directory. So I'll copy and paste the following command. And after a very short amount of time of running that command, you should see this window titled figure one appear on your screen. Depending on the file size of your past Iridium data, it could just take a few seconds or up to a few minutes for it to appear. So just be patient and it will show up eventually. I'm gonna to refer to this as the plot window from now on. And all of these red dots that you see inside the plot window are decoded frames of Iridium voice data that originated from Iridium satellite phones. I'm uncertain exactly what the orange dots signify, but if I were to guess, I would say that they are probably encrypted voice frames. If anybody knows for certain, please drop a comment in down below. Thank you. Now, none of this traffic originated from or was intended for me. So in the interest of staying on the correct side of the law, I'm not going to replay any of these transmissions in this video today. But I will show you how to replay the voice data hypothetically for the purposes of education and experimentation. Do not reproduce these steps ever, ever. You've been warned. So 
So in this image here, we have a plot window open with quite a bit of voice data showing. In order to replay all the voice traffic, we need to use our computer's mouse to left click at the very top of the plot window and then right click at the very bottom of the plot window. Make sure you're clicking inside of this square. So left click up here, right click down here. And if all has gone well, Iridium Toolkit will stitch all the decoded voice frames together and M player, which is a media player for the Linux terminal, will begin playing the audio from inside the terminal window. Each of these red dots on the plot window could be a millisecond of audio or it could be a minute of audio. Or maybe more, maybe up to a minute and a half perhaps. If you want to target a single red dot or line of Iridium voice data, like for example, it could be your own phone call, you can left click above the, yeah, you can left click above the dot and to the left of it, and then right click below and to the right of it. And then that'll just play that voice frame right there and, and no, none else. <clears throat> So if we turn our attention to the file browser again, we can see, I'll just do some cleaning up. I'll remove this file now, we don't need it. And we can see an Iridium capture file titled robvoice.bits, and that exists in the home directory. It contains a few brief voice transmissions that I made from my own Iridium satellite phone from my smartphone. I showed you my Iridium phone in part one. It's about this big, it's massive. <laughs> Can't believe people used to hold, put those things in their pocket. Um, and yeah, that's, these short phone calls cost me a fortune because satellite phone subscriptions are insanely expensive in Australia. It's unbelievable how expensive it is. It's like $10 a minute. And um, so this robvoice.bits file is not passed yet. So what I'll do is show you guys the Iridium parser Python script and what's that, what it's doing under the hood exactly. You only need to follow along with this portion of the tutorial. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste the following command. And you'll actually see what Iridium parser is doing in the background. Now, it's not very exciting, but this is basically what's happening during the passing process. It's all just text. It's all just lines of plain text and ones and zeros and stuff. So in the file browser, I can observe that robvoice.past has appeared in my home directory. And we can decode that running the following command. I'll clear the terminal so it's not confusing. I'll hit enter on that. <clears throat> now I have to remember which one of these is my voice. Not all of these are my voice, only some are. I believe it's this one here. So yeah, it's that one. So I know for a fact that this one here belongs to me. So it's perfectly legal for me to decode it and listen to it and share it with you guys. So I'll go ahead and do the left click, right click thing. So I will click above and to the left with my left mouse button and below and to the right with my right mouse button. And you guys should hear my Hello, voice. Hello, testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Testing Iridium Toolkit. Testing Iridium, testing Iridium Toolkit. The Iridium and Iridium Toolkit, one, two, three, four. Cool, that worked. And I believe this one here might be my voice too. Let's try it, shall we? If it's not, I'll uh, I'll I'll blur it out, beep it out in post production. You have seventy five minutes left on information. Please wait or your call is connected. Hello, test one two four. Testing our radio flight one two three four. Hello, hello. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, fine. All right, you've ever seen. Testing. Cool, okay. 
So yeah, essentially, that is real Iridium satellite voice traffic. And essentially what's happening is my voice is being beamed up to low Earth orbit via the um, satellite uplinks and then being transmitted back to Earth and received by my software-defined radio via a satellite. I just think that's so cool, man. Okay, let's talk about SMS messages now. Because Iridium is basically just GSM, 2G, under the hood, we can actually extract 2G-style SMS messages from an Iridium capture file. Again, trying to stay on the correct side of Australian law here, I have a file in my home directory called robsms.bits. It contains a text message that was sent to me from a ham radio colleague of mine who also happens to own an Iridium phone. The SMS message isn't very exciting. It just contains our amateur radio call signs. So because the data was intended for me, it's perfectly legal for me to decode it and share it with you guys. And I also have full permission from the sender to use his data for this video. I have to blur some information out like his ham radio call sign, but that's all right. You'll still see my call sign come up in the SMS message. So, so I'll go ahead and run the passing command again and you guys can see what Iridium Toolkit is doing behind the scenes when it's doing the passing. And then we can see in my home directory, a file, t a file titled robsms.past has appeared in my home directory. Now we have to extract the GSM packets to a Wireshark PCAP file, just like we did in the earlier video. And we do it with the following command. Actually, no, we haven't done this um, part of the tutorial yet sorry we haven't we haven't extracted a pcap file yet but that's okay so i'll run it with the v flag and it will show you what they're reassembling um when we're extracting the gsm packets what that looks like behind the scenes so i'll run the following command and we can see that a Wireshark PCAP file titled robsms.pcap has appeared in our home directory. And finally, to extract the SMS messages, we run the following T Shark command in our terminal window. So I'll clear the terminal. And then I'll run the following command. So as we can see here, you can see my amateur radio call sign and YouTube channel name has been listed here with the sending party telephone number on the left. So yeah, that's pretty cool if you ask me. There's also an SMS message that's not intended for me, so we're going to blur that out. While we're on the topic of Wireshark PCAP files, I forgot to mention that you can actually open the P the generated PCAP file up and you can look at the actual 2G GSM traffic as well. So yeah, I thought I'd just, I'll edit this in. I forgot to mention that you can do that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much all the useful stuff you can extract with Iridium so far. That's all the usable stuff anyway. There's a few other deprecated tools which aren't really supported anymore that can do a few other things, but I haven't really played around with that stuff. So yeah, that'll pretty much conclude my two-part Iridium decoding series. If you're still watching for this long, thanks for sticking around and I'll go ahead and give out my usual disclaimers. This video series was produced and uploaded for the express purposes of education and experimentation. Intercepting private telecommunications, transiting over a telecommunication system is prohibited in most legal jurisdictions and the penalties are harsh. Follow my tutorials at your own risk. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.